Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here. And today we're gonna try to solve this model. Try to create this model here using FreeCAD. Now this model comes from the Too Tall Toby website and this is our free sample challenge. So if you go to TooTallToby.com, you don't need an account or anything. You just say try as a guest. And then you can see here, we can say click here to try this sample and reveal drawing. So this is available for anybody who visits the site. And you can see here that in this challenge, we're challenged to use our 3D CAD system to 3D model this part in millimeters and then assign the material ABS. And then we're going to try to calculate the mass of this model. We're going to enter that answer down here. And if we get it wrong, we'll be told this is incorrect. And if you get it right, it's a lot of fun because then you get rewarded with a point and it's just kind of a cool experience and a really good way to practice 3D CAD. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up FreeCAD to attempt to do this challenge. Now, in this build of FreeCAD, which is 1.0.2, the only thing that I've done is I've added in the macro for um, mass information. So you'll see here, if I go into macros, I've got the center of mass FC macro. And I'll include a link down below to the Wikipedia where I found that macro. But basically, you just take that macro, download it, and then put it into your macros folder, and then it'll show up in that list. Other than that, this is just straight up out of the box free CAD, and we are gonna see if we can complete this challenge. The other thing that I wanna do before I leave this video today is I just wanna show you guys how to export the file from FreeCAD and then bring it into your 3D printer so that you can make a 3D print of this part as well. So let's get into it here. Let's give this thing a try and let's see what we come up with. So we're gonna start out here by going to the Too Tall Toby website. So here we go. We're gonna go to tooltalltoby.com. Like I said, you don't need an account or anything. You just on the homepage, you just say try as a guest. And then here you can say click here to try this sample and go. So we already talked about this a little bit, what the goal of this challenge is. Let's talk a little bit about modeling strategy now. So one of the first things you want to do when you're planning out your, your challenge, even before you start modeling, is you want to think about where should the origin be on this model. And I think that for this model, I'm going to drop the origin right here, right in the middle of the rectangle. Now, the reason I'm doing that is really twofold. First of all, this model has this centerline symmetric note. And what that means is that everything on one side of the centerline is going to be the same as everything over here on the other side. There's symmetry about that center line, and it actually goes in two different directions. But beyond that, anytime I've got a model that has a rectangular base in the model, I'm probably going to opt to drop the origin right here in the middle, because what that's going to do is it's going to give me a plane running through the model in 3D. And that can be very beneficial if you do any modeling on this side of the model. You could do a mirror command and just mirror that over to the other side. Or if you use this file in a higher level assembly, you can often use the planes from the higher level components and align them coplanar so that you can center all your parts about one another. So for all those reasons, generally speaking, when I have a part with a rectangular base, I'm probably going to put the origin in the middle. But really the big takeaway here is if you're just getting into the world of 3D CAD, you really want to think about where should the origin be when you're creating these models. So now that we know where the origin is, the next thing we're going to think about is what should my first sketch look like and what sketch plane should it be on? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my first sketch here on the top plane, and I'm just going to create a rectangle here. I'm going to center it on the origin, and it'll be 55 wide by 30 high. And then once I've got that 2D rectangle, I'm going to turn that sketch into a 3D model by extruding it up to a height of seven millimeters. So now what I'll be left with is kind of a rectangular box here with sharp corners. And as you can see here in this drawing, it does not have sharp corners, but instead the corners are rounded off. So we're going to need to round off these corners here with a radius of eight millimeters. And the tool that we use to round that off is called the fillet tool in 3D modeling in FreeCAD. And then finally, what we need to do is we need to hollow this thing out. This box is not solid, but it has this note here that says 1.6 wall thickness typical. So whenever you see that note that says typical, it basically means unless otherwise specified, you can expect that every wall on the model is going to be that 1.6 wall thickness. So this wall, this wall, this wall, even the floor is going to have that 1.6 wall thickness. So in FreeCAD and in really a lot of CAD systems, we can use a tool called either shell or thick 
thicken. Sometimes it's called thicken or thickness. It's, it's got different names, but basically it's some type of a shell command to accomplish that task. So we're going to use that tool in FreeCAD to hollow this thing out. That should take care of getting the geometry correct. And then all we need to do is assign the correct material because we're going to be calculating the mass. So we need to make sure we assign the correct material because mass is going to be material density times volume. So we want to make sure we can find that ABS and then we're going to see if we can calculate the mass. And again, we're going to calculate that mass using that macro link down below in the description to that macro. So now that we've got our game plan in place, let's move this over to our second screen. And look, I know that I burned off about three minutes there just coming up with a game plan, but I think that it's really important. Anytime you're working in 3D CAD, you, you take a moment and just kind of think about what your game plan is. And then if you need to, you can adjust on the fly, but it can really save you a lot of time when you actually get into the modeling. So let's move this challenge over here to this other screen and let's get into it here. Here we are in FreeCAD and we're gonna to choose to create a new file. We're gonna create this parametric part here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look over here at the tree area in FreeCAD and we're just gonna expand this menu so that we can see our planes. So we've got our XY plane, our XZ plane and our YZ plane. I think we're gonna use our XY plane here. Now, one thing that I use a lot of times just to kind of regain my bearings is I just look down here in this corner at the, the triad. So you can see Y is pointing off that way, X is pointing off that way and Z is pointing up. So that means that my YZ plane is gonna be kind of the, the top plane looking down on this model so i'm going to choose that top plane there that that um yz plane or sorry yx plane or uh, uh xy plane i misspoke when i was looking at the the triad there it's going to be the yx plane yx plane there so we're going to look here at this xy plane and we're just going to click on the plane here in the tree and then we're going to go up to these menus up top and we're going to say sketch create sketch and that takes us into a new sketch on that plane so now that we're looking down kind of directly on that plane and here we can see where the origin is we're going to go up here to this menu for the sketch rectangle this menu here but we're going to actually fly this menu out here and when we fly out that menu we're going to see that we can choose the center rectangle and that's what we want to kind of stick with our game plan so we're going to choose the center rectangle we're going to come over here click on that origin point that zero zero point move our mouse a little bit and then once we move our mouse away we can just let go of our mouse and then we can type in the dimension so 55 enter 30 enter and boom there we go a nice fully constrained rectangle there centered on the origin and we've got our appropriate dimensions 30 millimeters and 55 millimeters and it's important you get the correct dimensions because when you go to make your 3d print you want to make sure that it's printing out at the correct size so now that we're done with that sketch we can use this icon here this is going to be the exit sketch icon so we use this icon here and then we can just jump right into this command actually the mouse is already right there but we can jump right into this command to extrude that sketch as a solid so we exited the sketch the sketch is still selected so we'll just right away choose to extrude that sketch as a solid using this pad tool here this very first tool here and then what we're going to do is we're going to say that we want that thickness to be seven millimeters so we look at the drawing and we can see the drawing is looking for a seven millimeter thickness there and enter boom Done with our first feature, already done with that extrusion. So now we're gonna try to create our fillets. Now, one thing that I've learned in FreeCAD is that when it comes to rotating, what it seems like you have to do is you have to uh, hold down the left, or sorry, the middle button, which is normally pan, and then you're gonna also hold down the right button, and that'll let you get into a rotate command. And that's gonna be important so that we can fill it off this back corner here. You'll also notice that the keys number one, two, three, four, are hotkeyed to some standard views, five, six, hotkeyed to some standard views, and then zero is your hotkey for your isometric. And if you have the part zoomed in too far or zoomed out too far, you can press V and then immediately press F, VF, and that's your zoom to fit, VF. So those are always important to learn no matter what CAD system you're working in. All right, so now we're gonna modify this solid part by adding some fillets. So here you can see the fillet command for our solids kind of right up here in the middle of this toolbar. So we're gonna choose the fillet command here and we're gonna say that we want that fillet to have a radius here of eight millimeters. 
So eight millimeters. And then we're going to come up here. We're going to click this button that says select. Make sure you click that button or else you're not going to be able to select the edges. So make sure you click that button. And then we're going to click this edge and this edge and this edge. And then we're going to use that trick of holding down the middle button and then also holding down the right click. And that way we can get around to that other edge. If you just hold down the middle button, that'll let you pan. And then when you're done with that, you can choose OK. And boom, there you go. So we can press zero there to get back to an isometric view. And man, this thing is looking good. So now the final thing we need to do is create that shell or that hollowed out wall thickness. In the case of FreeCAD, you can see that this, this uh, tool is called Thickness. Thickness, and it's again right up here kind of in this middle toolbar. So we're going to choose Thickness here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to input our thickness. So it's already highlighted. So we just type in 1.6 there. And then you can take your mouse out on the screen and you can click this face here. And if that all looks good to you, you can click OK. Now you notice here I clicked it, but it didn't show up in this box. I might need to click this Select button. I kind of mentioned that last time. The order in which you do things sometimes will affect those results. So I'll click Select, and then I'll click this face here. And there we go. Now that face is selected. That's what we wanted there. And so now we're going to click the OK button. And oh yeah, this is looking great. Guys, we are right on track here. And so the final thing we need to do now is we need to come up with the mass of this model. But the only way the mass is going to be correct is if we have assigned the correct material density. So we're going to go over here to where it says model. We're going to go to the body. So we just kind of take the scroll bar here and scroll up a little bit. Go up here to the top where it says body, right click. And then when you right click, you can choose the material. And here you can see this free CAD library of different materials. And we're looking for the material for plastic and ABS. So I find that if you kind of keep scrolling down here, you can get to the other free CAD library menu. And uh, as you continue to scroll down here, you'll find the subcategory for plastic. Now, if you can't see this menu, maybe use your uh, uh, mouse wheel to continue to scroll. But ultimately, you're going to find down here that you have these thermoplastics and here you can see ABS generic FC material that should do the trick so you can choose that one and then if you just scroll up with your mouse you can get to this button here that says close so you choose that button that says close and that will take care of assigning that material to that body Now the body may be highlighted, it may not be, but if you want to just, or if you, if, if it's not highlighted, just click on it. So you see it highlights in blue there. And then what you can do is you can go to the command macro, and then you can go to macros here. And any of the macros that you've copied into your macro folder will be listed here in this list. So you can click on that macro, center of mass FC macro, and then you can choose execute. Now, if you forgot to select the body, it's gonna tell you that nothing was selected, but we did remember to select that body. And so now we can look over here and we can see that we're coming up with a mass of 0.0041 kilograms or 4.1 grams. So now that we've got that mass there, we can go back to the app. So here's the app here. Remember the first time we typed in 10, it was incorrect. So we're going to type in 4.1 grams and enter. And oh yeah, we did it. We got the correct answer there. That's what I like to see. And so you can see here that we were able to use FreeCAD to go through that challenge. It's a lot of fun. It's fun when you get it wrong and then you have to figure it out and then you get it right. And if you want to try some more of these challenges for free, you can register for a Too Tall Toby account and then unlock a few more of these challenges for free. So if you want to give that a try, you go for it. But what I want to do before we end this tutorial is just go back into FreeCAD and I want to get this model ready to be 3D printed. And so what we need to do to get this model ready to be 3D printed is we need to get it here onto our printer slicer. And what the slicer does is it gets your model ready to go into the 3D printer and it will often export some form of G code that the 3D printer can read and then it uses that G code uh, uh, to basically create a tool path for the 3D printer, you know, a path for the 3D printer to lay down the material. So what we need to do is we need to get the geometry from FreeCAD into a format where it can be read here by the 3D printer. And there are two very common formats for that. One of them is called 3MF and one of them is called STL. 3MF is the newer, very common format that a lot of people use these days. STL is a little bit of an older format, but it still works in pretty much every slicer. So that's the format that I'm going to use. I'm going to go here to file, export, so file export. And once I go to file export, you can see here that there are a number of different file types, including 3MF right here at the very top of the list. 
uh, AMF, additive manufacturing format, that would also work for most 3D printers that are modern. And then kind of down here towards the bottom, STL or STL mesh. So that's going to be the file format I'm going to use. And I am going to save this as small, hollow, box, free CAD. And I'm going to say save. And now I've got an STL of that file exported from FreeCAD. So now I can just grab that file here from my Windows Explorer, and I'm going to drag and drop that here onto my slicer. And what the slicer does is it lets you set up things like, you know, what's the, the quality of the print, kind of like presets. It's basically all the presets for the print, what kind of infill you're going to use, what percentage of infill, what the pattern of the infill is going to be. Are you going to use a raft or not use a raft? You'll also create settings here that will help you with printing different types of materials but a lot of the modern printers actually have templates set up for those different types of materials. So you don't have to know like what's the optimal temperature for PETG versus PLA. You just choose the material here and then the slicer will go in and make those adjustments to the temperature. So what the slicer does is it lets you get this model ready to be 3D printed. One thing I just wanted to point out here is that almost every slicer will give you the opportunity to rotate the model on the bed. And the reason I'm pointing that out here is because this orientation that I just adjusted to is really not a good orientation for this part because this orientation would require that we come in here and we create some supports for this kind of overhang here. So you'd have to fill in, you can't just print that ledge there in free space, you'd have to support it. And that's not really gonna be optimal for this application. You know, the printer orientation is, a, is kind of like its own entire topic and it can affect the strength of the part. But for this part, we're just trying to create a little container to keep on our desk. The strength isn't really that important. But what we do wanna do is avoid having to unnecessarily print supports. So what we could do is we could rotate this part back down onto the bed. But I just wanted to point out to you that first of all, most most slicers will let you change that orientation. And second, most slicers have a tool like this where you can just pick on any face on the model and then that face will be placed face down on the bed. And so now we've got a much better solution because now you can see that we have got the opening facing up and that means we're not gonna need any support when we go to 3D print this thing. So in this case, I'm using the Prusa slicer. This is the slicer that came with my 3D printer. And I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna set all my options. Let's say we're gonna print with PLA and we're going to print, uh, let's say I'm using a different printer. I'm using the uh, MK3S. So we're going to say we're going to print here with this one. And uh, we're going to maybe like relocate this into a better spot. Maybe the the bed has like uh, some areas of the bed that it have have gotten ugly because of, you know, extensive printing. So it'll print out better if it's over here or something like that. You can kind of relocate it. And then you can choose slice now. And when you choose slice now, what'll happen is the slicer will tell you what the estimated time for the print is. And you'll typically end up with a button here where you can export the machine code. So I could say export G code and I'm going to export that as I'll just leave it as the default name. And then I'm going to take that G code. I'm going to put it on an SD card and then I'll take the SD card over to my print and get this thing printing. So that's basically what the start to finish process is. Um, that is your free CAD tutorial for this challenge. I hope that you guys give this challenge a try over at tutaltoby.com because it is a pretty fun part. But more importantly, now you know how to begin a new model, how to create some basic extrudes and fillets and hollow this thing out. And you know how to export that file to STL and send that code over to the 3D printer. So hopefully this tutorial gave you everything that you need, but let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you, that you didn't see or if there's anything that you'd like to see in the future. Let me know what you thought about this tutorial. Let me know how fast you were able to finish this challenge using FreeCAD. And of course, be sure to like and uh, welcome to the Too Tall Toby community. I really wanna wish you all the best on your 3D CAD journey.